<laughs> Uwaga means attention <laughs> in, in, in Polish. It's always and been then, on me. then shisha means silence. Shisha, I thought that was the thing you smoked, wasn't it? No, no, like a pipe with the bubbles in no, it. No, in Polish, shisha means silence. Uwaga, attention, and then they say camera, yeah. action. Rolling. Hey, this is Stu, and today we're back with John Scott for some more videos. And today we're with a very serious John <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Not serious now, yeah. but you were serious this morning in the Charlotte, weren't you, John? Um, you want to tell us about that first? Yes, I have uh, a lovely group of people here that uh, have come to Val Purple Valley for a, a two-week retreat, holiday, yoga. And uh, Stu, I take my job really uh, seriously, uh, having now clocked up, say, 30 years of yoga practice and seeing the results of the practice, I'm really wanting to pass on to the people that come here for two weeks that they've got something to take away. That um, they're not just here to, to uh, carry on with an ordinary practice. Um, I want them to be able to take away a practice that they own themselves, that they are accountable f to themselves, they're independent, and most of all, the real secret of this practice is if you can share it. Yeah, and it was all about getting them involved, really, wasn't it? Getting pa them there, thinking participating. about what they're doing. Mm. Participating. And if you've got a group of 20 people, and if each one of those 20 people actually put some energy in and participate, they help not just themselves, they help one another. Mm, cool. And it's very effective. It's a collective consciousness. It changed, though, from the, a little bit disorganized at the beginning yeah. to being very yeah. flowing and all together. Yes, yeah, so Stu, uh, before the cameras went on, Stu said it was a little bit like good cop, bad cop. I'm sure in a couple of days' time they'll, they'll think I'm really kind. They'll love you <laughs> like we all do. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a side of Guruji that was always a strict side, and he would be saying, bad man. You know, bad man. But then there'd be a smiley side that would say, good bad man. So, <laughs> so it's like, you're always bad, but you can be slightly bad. Good, yeah, yeah. yes. So with today, we, we originally filmed, like we jumped ahead of ourselves, didn't we? We were on the beach and we filmed, you might have seen it, the part of the baby sequence. So now we're sort of turning the clock back and jumping like a prequel to that. Yes. And uh, this is, what do we call this? The baby sequence. Oh, it's still part of the baby sequence. Let's, let's say the whole thing is a baby development to child uh, or toddler. Right. So the sequence that we did on the beach is more what I call the fundamental foundations and openings. Right. And let's say that's when you're really at a little toddler. You've, you're now independently crawling, uh, walking, and being quite mobile. Uh, but this sequence is pre-sitting. This is to develop... Uh, the core strength, um, and so we in, end up getting head control and being able to sit balancing the head above the pelvis. Right, and you can see we've got blankets on the floor, we're not on yoga mats, and you were saying to me before that sometimes you do this on the bed and sometimes you do it on blankets on the ground or... Yes, I, this is part of my um, daily uh, routine, or my day, when I wake up, or you could say your daily ablutions, Guruji was always asking me, how many times bathroom? He really wanted to make sure that I didn't have constipation and that I moved my bowels, preferably in the morning before practice. And so this is really, it's, two, it's twofold. One is to help us uh, get a pattern and a rhythm in our bowel to be eliminating first thing in the morning. So there's a little massage than there. But uh, secondly, it's... Um, my inquiry over the years is, is, has always been, Stu, what are we doing on the yoga mat? Mm. Where does it come from? And the Yoga Chikitsa series is, to me, is advanced. And um, as a preparation to it, we're sitting on the floor. The Western culture um, usually arrives at a yoga class having not sat on the floor for years. And so, um, here we are trying to do very complex um, asana shapes and forms and some of those asanas are animals uh, and reflecting nature or even some of the great sages. And as a parallel to that, in the martial art world, we might have the crouching tiger hidden dragon. dragon. So yeah. in, in martial arts you, you fight like a crane or you fight like a snake and you're actually shape-shifting from human to animal. And I'm not sure that that realization happens in many 
yoga practices that we're in fact shape-shifting. When we're doing trikonasana, we're actually shape-shifting into a triangle and having empathy for a triangle. When we do eventually get into our supta kurmasana, we're a sleeping tortoise. Yeah. When we get into our ustrasana, we're a camel. And so it's a quantum leap for an adult to make to go from being stuck in this stiff body that thinks it's doing a, t a deep back bend or a deep forward bend to stretch the hamstrings. It's lost. We've got to make a, a leap to, to um, have the empathy of what it is to be um, a camel or a tortoise. And so for me in my quarry, it took me back to re the realization in order to learn how to move like an animal, first I need to go back and learn how to move how I used to move as a child. And so this is what we're in now, yeah. Yeah, and so to realize too that when we arrive as a baby, it was all there for us and we lost it. The power of awareness. I call that our first city. We arrive with the power of awareness, Stu. And you can see it on a baby, they're just taking it all in. Mm, inquisitive. And they're part of it. They're not separate to it. That happens at the end of our fundamental foundation and openings. That's the terrible twos. When they are independent, right. they've become separated. They've, they've come away from the breast. The earlier they've come away from the, the womb. And so it's a slow separation to becoming independent. And unfortunately in that uh, separation, we then separate from all of this. Yeah. And so it's about going back. Yoga is about going back to remember what it was to be in union. And so there's the first city is the power of awareness. Second city is the power of attention. The moment that you really put your attention to something, you'll find that you're then back in that place of awareness. And when you're in that place of attention, the third city starts to surface. And that third city is the power of inquiry or the power of interest. Hmm. And then the fourth city that rises from that is the power of imagination. And if we can have the power of imagination, then like a child practicing as a camel, they are camel. Yeah, they really embody it. They really embody it. Mm. So they have the empathy of what it is to be camel. They're not mm. doing a deep back bend. Yeah. Whereas an adult doing a camel, they're doing a deep back bend. Yeah. And paying lip service to the camel bit. Exactly. Mm. And then they're getting caught up in the stretch, caught up in the, pr in the, the asana, and not actually transcending themselves. And for me, a yoga practice is to transcend your ordinary self, shape shift into something extraordinary. Yeah. And so we need to go back. Um, unfortunately, even you know, when you said I'm serious this morning, I see that there isn't any imagination in the class. Yeah. I see in the class there isn't really an, a, an, an interest or an inquiry because attention has been lost. It's just, uh, just like a pack of cards falling over, that if you lose the imagination, if you lose the inquiry, you have no attention. And so what I was doing was bringing people to attention. Yeah. Because I know that within all of that is the power of awareness. We and then you get, get much more out of it too, don't totally, you? Because yeah. otherwise you drift through something, yeah. oh, it's all right. You know, but yeah. if you're really there, yeah. you really like suck yeah. all the goodness out. So I will be taking the group through this maybe Tuesday. Right. Uh, maybe Thursday. I'll be taking the group through this baby sequence. And so this baby sequence is, uh, again, uh, how I start my day to, to A, open my body, wake it up, um, and then also go to the bathroom. Additionally to that, you might remember I mentioned I did injure my back some That's time right, ago. Yeah. Um, the, this part of the sequence has what's really reconnected me to my core and um, I would say healed my back. There's the moves that are included in this sequence. Cool, because yeah. there's a lot of people out there with uh, yeah. dodgy backs. And so should we start? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's first of all lie on our um, blanket. So I either do this straight on the bed or I put a blanket down on the floor and I start off in what I call sleeping baby. So if you just put your right foot on top of your left, Stu, that's it, and bring your arms up the shoulder height at 90 degrees, this is sleeping baby. And if anyone has a baby or um, 
family, within the family has a baby, you will have seen this positive for sure. And so this is also to go over our um, anatomical terms. From here, we can actually do what I call adduction, is to clamp the knees in, swap the feet over, and abduct. Now, I'm with <laughs> anatomy teacher here on my left. <laughs> so I'll pick up any old rubbish yeah, you tell me. So Stu's probably thinking, well, we're not really abducting because gravity's got the legs. And that's true. We're, the leg, we're wanting gravity to take those legs open, and you might need to put pillows under your knees or blankets. But to really abduct, we need to squeeze the glutes, I think, uh, Stu. Let's squeeze the glutes and see what happens. And they might open a little bit more. So squeeze your glutes and then relax. Mm. And then let's clamp the legs together, adduct, swap the feet over, and exhale, abduct. Good. So while the legs are, are lying there now, just opening up through the groins, we could try the shoulders, Stu. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can do a medial rotation. Oh, try and keep those shoulders down, then go back to lateral. So let's go medial again with the arms, Stu. Take them forward and trying to keep the shoulders down, relax, and then go lateral with the arms. Okay, let's adduct the knees again. Good. Now you asked why is one leg on top of the other. Let's put mm. the left foot on top of the right arch. And what it is, is it's allowing the, the left ankle to, to loosen off and to be flexible as well in its inversion. And we need that inversion plus a plantar flexion combination to go into lotus. So this helps your lotus ankle. Yeah, let's do the right leg. Inhale, abduct, swap the feet over, and exhale, abduct the right foot on top. Okay, to add to the little massage, I bring my hands to the navel and I just allow the weight of my hands to sort of sink or drift down through the abdominal wall. So a little bit of pressure to go through the abdominal wall. And then I start to do little circle rotations around the navel in a clockwise direction. I do little circle rotations around. Now in the bowel, there's going to be three, three of the elements present. And three of the elements present, there will be space there will be, or maybe there's four elements, there will be air, as in wind, there will be water, and there will be earth. So when I go around, and this feels a bit spacious at the moment, um, and as I go around, sometimes I then feel the air, which is wind, and that sometimes is like a hard golf ball. And I actually put pressure on that hard golf ball and then just relax to see whether that will, will uh, start to dissipate and move around the clockwise through the, um, the intestines into the, the colon. And so what I then do is I go further out and around. Once I get to the lower right side, that's the beginning of the ascending colon. And for me, usually that's where I find fluid, water. And so I then move the air and the fluid up the ascending colon, and then I move across the transverse colon, and then I go down the descending colon, and that's where my next uh, bowel movement is. That's the earth, <laughs> the matter that's going to move, yeah? And so I give that a massage. Adding to the complement of this Bhadakonasana, I place my feet both fat, flat on the floor, I push on my left foot, reverse fold the right leg into Tiriangamukha or Virasana. It's if your quadricep is tight, you might need to use your standing leg to lift the buttocks off the floor to really stretch through that quadricep. And then give an extra massage up that ascending colon. That's, that really helps move uh, through the organ. Okay. And we won't spend too much time. We'll just release that one out. And then I reverse fold the left leg. So I lift with my standing foot right leg, lift the buttocks up, reverse fold the left leg. I'm trying to keep that quadricep in line, so the center of the thigh bone parallel and the kneecap level. And then just work down the descending colon. And then we could do a complete counter pose, which is to put both legs in Virasana. And 
babies can do both of these, although they might not do it in the way that we're doing. So remember, we're combining uh, baby research and um, some postural complements and some anatomy terminology here. So let's release out, go back to our sleeping baby, Baddha Konasana. Clamp the legs together, straighten the legs up. And then this could be like a mobile energy in the fingers and the toes. But what I do is I take my knees, bend them, hold my shins. I put pressure down through the shin bones, down through the hips to flatten my lower back into the floor. I know that when I put pressure on the connective tissue, that changes the viscosity, viscosity of, the, of the, the, the tissue and it allows it to lengthen and open. Okay, so I go flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. Good. And then from there, Stu, I take it out and I do what I call baby upavishtakonasana. I hold the heels and then I straighten through the shin bone, through the thigh bone into the hip, trying to roll the pelvis down to the floor. And then I do what I call happy baby. Happy baby is, of course, it's a very oral stage and the toes go into the mouth. Mm. Yeah. So head comes to toes. I think I need a long tongue, maybe. Yeah, and you can put your mouth <laughs> around your toes. Now, if you have a look where you are with your knees, if you rock from side to side, just use that as a benchmark to note how far your knees are from the floor. The baby has them on the floor. And anyone doing Supta Kumasana in the primary series, Chikitsa series, really you need to be able to do this. So this is a precursor to yeah. Supta Kumasana. Minor three yeah. inches up. Then once we've done this, Stu, let's just try that again. The, the baby Upavishta, you might find it's more open. And, and then, whoops. Come to baby Pashimatanasana. Mm -hmm. And then let's put the knees back down on the floor. Let's do a, a few more anatomy terms. Mm. Um, because I mentioned I was sort of trying to work through my own back injury uh, from too many <laughs> adjustments and lifting. Let's go into extension. So when the body's in full extension, which is inhale, we're fully lengthened, and then exhale is flexion. And inhale is extension. Exhale is flexion. Inhale is extension. Exhale is flexion. Good, let's extend the legs up. Good, let's take them to Pashimottanasana. And then imagine you're a, an artist or an architect or a designer and you've got a pen between your toes and you want to draw your center line. So you go from Paschimottanasana to your forehead, to your nose, to your mouth, to your heart, to your navel. At your navel, reach the hands through and roll the feet away and you get a really nice lateral rotation lower leg. Your forearms can really open up your groins and really um, draw the heels towards you, roll the feet towards the floor. Can you feel that? Yeah, they're not really going very far, but they're there. The intention is there. Yeah, and so this, this is, as I say, I, I do this every morning. And if you do something repeatedly, then it gets familiar mm. and it becomes easier. I then release my legs out, and then I swing them all the way around to baby Pashimottanasana again. In a sense, we're doing the Chikitsa series on our back. Mm, yeah. Yeah, can you see that? Upavishta. Yeah. Mm. And then we're done forward bend. We're doing Kurmasana. We're doing Baddha Konasana. Let's draw the feet down that center line again. At the navel, swap the legs over. And open those groins. Release the legs out. Swing them around. Good. Draw the center line again. Good. Let's just, for the sake of remembering the sequence, let's just review where we were. Sleeping baby. Yep. Adduction. Abduction. Good. Uh, we then had reverse fold leg. Right side. Yeah. Release. Reverse fold left leg. Good. 
release. We then had legs vertical. We had both. Yeah, bend the knee. Oh, we had both, yes, that's mm. true. And straighten. Bend and straighten. Good. Bend and straighten. Good. We then had nice wide upper vista. Good. And then we had sleeping baby. We went back and did a few extensions and flexions. Extensions and flexions. Stu, for this next part, let's just yeah. roll up to sitting and just spin around for the camera, just purely for the camera, and then lie down. And then we do sort of like baby bounces or baby bridge. Mm -hmm. We just lift the bottom up and down. Okay, they lift the bottom up and down, lift it up and down, yeah, up and down. And not controlling it particularly yeah, on the yeah, way down, yeah, just yeah, letting it drop. Yeah, just letting it drop, yeah. Then I put my hands in my, my thighs, I lift up, I then do posterior, anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior, anterior. Now you can either have your hands to the side here. Now notice we're on the back of the head. Uh-huh. Um, might just grab that, put that underneath your head. Just get your pillow, put it underneath your head. This is quite amazing. Just push your uh, feet, head on the floor, and arch up. And then come back down. This is a real variation alternative to Setu Bandhasana. Hmm. This is the baby beginning to really get ready for its second series. Okay, can you see that? We can try that with the arms over. Can you feel that? Yeah. That's the action that we're really looking for in Setu Bandhasana. Well, some people find that too much on their neck. Ah, too much for them. Not that they're doing it correctly. You watch if, it, you watch me, if you watch me demonstrate, mm. I'm on the back of my neck, I mean the back of my head. head. All I'm doing is using the power of the spine. We've gone from flexion to extension. Yeah, flexion to extension. Babies also then do hyperextension. Do you see that? Yeah. Now that hyperextension wasn't me doing just that. You weren't just cranking your neck Yeah, If I just do mm. that, I'm cranking my neck too. Mm. So here what I'm doing is flexion. Try it with me. Extension. And then that starts from Mula Bandha, from Uddiyanda Bandha. Start lifting through your navel. Can you feel how you're pushing back on your head and you're going yeah. into, yeah? You're going into hyperextension. Then really go. It's like being a dancer. And then come back down. Yeah, got that? Yeah. Because what we've got to find out is how does the baby get to their tummy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if we have our arms down here and we try and roll, there's no way we can get to our tummy. Yeah. And so I'll do a little demonstration. I'll bring my arm up. I'll bring my right leg to Marici. I'm going to push on that roll on my right side and arch and then come back down. But if we then bend the left leg, we can then roll right and arch, and then come back down. Okay. So we're now combining flexion, extension, hyperextension. Okay. It's that hyperextension that we need, in this case, to roll over. If we bend the right leg, roll left, hyperextend, we will roll over. Yeah? Cool. And our second series would begin. <laughs> but let me show you it slightly differently. Let me show you slightly different. Because remember I sort of said that really babies come with already some cities? Some, yes. Some superpowers? Yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is super baby. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, this is super baby. If I just move over a little bit, you'll see this. I'm going to go flexion, extension, hyperextension, flexion, roll, super baby. Okay. <laughs> See if you can do that one. Flexion, flexion extension, extension, flexion, 
extension, hyperextension, beautiful, flexion, roll and extend. <laughs> okay, so this is now, we're now in second series. Okay, yeah. So let's just review that mentally. We did everything lying on our back. We did Baddha Konasana. We did lateral media with our arms. Yeah. There's all your bindings. Yeah. We did uh, uh, flexion extension, that's forward bending. Yeah. And back bending. We took the legs apart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we mm. didn't do the twist. We didn't do a little twist. Should we do a little twist? Yeah. Let's rewind. Come, let's rewind and come back this way because it'd be good this way. How come my mat's all wrinkled up and yours <laughs> is all still nice and flat? Is that telling me something about my dodgy technique? Your super baby. My super baby wasn't so super. <laughs> <laughs> it was just very okay. normal baby. I call this swastika. Swastika. So we had our, our Bada Konasana. I reversed one leg. Mm hmm. Okay, and then reverse the other arm. How the fuck? Oh, I can't <laughs> swear. How, I, was gonna say, how the, I wasn't going to swear, honest. I was going to say, how How did you get your feet to move like that without actually getting hold of it? And you got that? Can you feel that? So it's a nice little twist, and I call that um, swastika. Yeah, which yeah. one's up, which yeah, one's So it, 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 you know, you can see how those shoulders are tight. They lift up, don't they? Yeah. Good. Okay, and then let's swap the other side. This one? Yeah. yeah, you can do it either way. Yeah, doesn't see yeah. And that's a nice little, oh, um, really good side stretch down through the, that, is it the IT band, I think? Do you want a point off foot or dorsiflex? Yeah, uh, dorsiflex. Let's roll back up again. And spin around. So let's just have a look at that. Um, roll again. Let's do the the roll where we do the Marici. Bring the arms up, bend the left leg up, start rolling to the right, arch, and roll over. Okay. Now you've heard me talk about armpit bunda, Stu. Yeah. Yeah. So armpit bunda is a combination of imagination, but really trying to to go into the feeling and the sensation of what it is to be a baby. When you're a baby, there are no stories, paragraphs, sentences, words. We're actually pre-word. We're pre-language. Yeah. And so they must be just totally in all five open senses. And so they're actually in a meditation. They're in Pratihara, Dharana. So we're going backwards, really, from the time we were babies. Yes, exactly. And so when I, when I do this work on my own, or even when I'm presenting it to a class, I go into basically a meditation. And it's in that meditation that things are seen mm -hmm. or revealed. So there's a line from your um, armpits to your navel, which I call Anadi, and that's my armpit bandha. And it's developed by putting my head on the floor. If we both put our heads on the floor, and you asked me about when we did the uh, hyperextension on the head, wouldn't that crank the neck of the student? Yeah. Well, if I give you an auto suggestion, and I'll do it with you myself, let's lift the head. Inhale, lift the head. Now, that's all external muscles lifting the head. Mm. Let's put it down again. Inhale, lift the head. Yeah, can you feel that's all back of the neck and all that? Now, let's have some imagination, put the forehead down. We had Superman when we rolled over. Mm -hmm. Let's do Spider-Man. Spider-Man mm. means to grip your hands onto the floor surface, sticky hands, and then draw the armpits towards your navel. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. When you draw your armpits towards your navel, do you feel how your feet start to contract into you? Yeah, they I can feel my lats working. Yeah, yeah, good. But do you feel your feet move towards you? Yeah. Then so if you grip your hands to the floor, draw your armpits to your navel, if you point your toes, work your shins, work your, th your calves, your thighs, then your butt, lift your heart, and then lift the head. Can you feel that? Mm-hmm. 
Where's that come from? It's not those external neck muscles, is it? No, it feels no. like everything else is working. Yeah, mm. and that's really how your upward dog should feel. Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. So, Spider-Man hands. Draw the armpits towards the navel. Start to engage the feet, the legs, the buttocks. Start lifting the heart and then lift the head. If we then just drop the head down, slide the hands in, we would be in think Sphinx, baby. Mm -hmm. So again, this is another way to feel the upward dog. We're not collapsing in the shoulders. Try it. That's collapse, and yeah. often you'll see a very beginner or a mm. person that hasn't developed the internal core or strength, they'll be collapsed in their upward dog. Yeah. And what we're wanting to do is press down through those arms, but draw the arms back, bringing the sternum through to free up the neck, to free up the whole mm. spine. Can you feel that? Mm, I like this posture. Yeah. yeah, and so Sphinx Baby, okay, has, has been one of the major parts of my healing my back. Uh-huh. Because I then add to Sphinx Baby, Salamander Baby. Right. So, s yeah. And mirror. Yeah, good. Yeah, feel that? Yeah. Now, this is, if you get your groin to the floor, arch up and turn, you're doing a beautiful, f what's that? Hyperextension and rotation and side flexion. Mm. All in that lower back. It's really beautiful. And then straighten it out and let's try the other side. So I call it salamander baby on the right side, or the opposite side, and then straighten it back out. And let's do the, you do your, your right and I'll do my left. Here, I then, <laughs> I then straighten the same side. Yeah. And then I open up. And it's a little bit like a baby reaching, you know. Mm. Okay, and then come back down. Try the other side, extend that out. And there you're letting your groin come off the I'm floor. Try, I'm, I, my groin's coming off, but when you reach there, try and sink your groin down. Try and sink your groin down. Reach up. Okay, and then come back down. Yeah? Yeah. And then I have what I call super frog. Okay. Super frog baby. That if we did one at a time. If, if we did one and then the other, yeah, that we'd land it'd up sort of be a bit frog. like a crawl, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just put that. Oh, I'm glad to see that's rocking up eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> it's like if I put my knee. Now, this is what I call super frog. And this is like the transitions to from up dog to down dog. In the upward dog, we've come through with the heart and we've followed with the head. Mm -hmm. And on downward dog, it's head down, lift with your psoas, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, okay, so watch this. Head down, lift with my psoas. Okay. So you're not going right down, you're going yeah. just to neutral. Yeah. yeah, just make sure your knees are on the on the rug. So then head down, suck the legs in, super frog. Cool. And then we would be baby uh, balasana pose of a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to try that again? See if we can slide them back out. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the skin off my knees. Oh, that's good. Okay. okay. Yeah. And let's go. Super frog. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel a competitive okay. element sneaking okay. in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I've done this on the bed, yeah. Remember, I did mention that I've done a ba I've done a uh, abdominal massage, and I'm on my way to the toilet. Yeah, you'd and be going by now. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do is <laughs> I do what I call um, commando baby. Right. And I actually go backwards. Off the bed. Off the bed. S stand, and then I'm on my way to the toilet. Cool. Yeah. So okay. for any of you guys that are finding it hard to go in the mornings, <laughs> try, <laughs> try your salamanders. <laughs> they will loosen you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stu. If you want to replay the whole sequence, then you'll be able to get the sequence. Um, Stu, I will be publishing this at some point. Oh, cool! Like yeah. a, the full pucker thing. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. Will, be like will that be on your app? Is it the sort of thing that be on the uh, app or separate? It'll be a book. Oh, cool. But nice. it could be a, could be an app too. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Nice. Because so many people, you know, they they love it. They 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 practice it here, and it really they really get in touch with it. So it's. Uh, well, for me, it's as I said, it's about appreciating that. Where we were as a baby, awareness, attention, inquiry or interest, yeah. and then imagination. 
If we can bring that into our asana practice, then it takes it to another level. Adding to, you know, we haven't used that word, the count. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That. <laughs> that was a non-counted <laughs> sequence. Yeah, oh, I wonder why I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so the count is another story altogether, isn't it? But yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, John, for sharing this with us. And uh, of course, there's so many parts to what you do that it all, but it all comes together, doesn't it? Into yeah. Well, if you think about what we've just done on the floor, there, we've done elements of the primary series yeah. fully supported by the floor. Yeah. And then there was elements of the second series. So this whole uh, stigma about you must do primary series before second series. Yeah. Babies have already done shalabhasana. And so Shalabhasana is a really important posture. And that if we're, if we're uh, even people that are only doing a half primary series, yeah. they could be doing this yeah. as a pre-practice. Um, let's just remember what it was to move like a baby. Yeah. This is very, it feels a very nice warm up as mm. well, yeah. uh, you know, to, to get yeah. the body, everything yeah. circulating. And then that's, as I mentioned, I think when we were on the beach, it was that, that Guruji, never lost his fundamental foundations and openings. As a 90-year-old, he moved like a baby. Yeah. He didn't move like an elderly person. No, which you really notice in some people, don't you? At 90, he could mm. still sit on the floor and mm. stand up. And I was impressed with that. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks, you. guys, and uh, really have a go at this. Try it out, and because you can watch it, and it doesn't really necessarily make sense until you try it out. So you can you can just uh, have a go. You can play it while you're having a go, and just rewind bits if you you've lost it. But it felt really nice to do. So uh, have a play around. And if you're completely lost, come to a workshop. Yes, exactly. Thank you.